Hey guys, welcome back to the Gamers Vault. I'm your host, James. Today we're actually going to be doing the software portion of our NES Raspberry Pi computer. So, thank you for tagging along. So, to, to get started with your Raspberry Pi, you need either one of four cards. It's a micro SD card, and you can have them at any part of like like space. So you have eight gigs, sixteen gigs, thirty-two gigs, or sixty-four gigs. On my personal one, I'm using a sixty-four. I'm gonna put ROMs on there for now, but I'm also gonna add a hard drive later, and I'm gonna show you guys that later on. So to get us started, you put the micro SD card into your computer, and you're gonna run this free program, SD Formatter. As you can see, I have a lot of them up here. I have Windows 32. 132 disk imager, excuse me, SD formatter, Win SCP, and the RetroPie 4.1. Now, I'm going to show you all the links below so you can get to these softwares, but for now, just to save time, I'm going to go through it. So, as you can see, my computer did detect, detect excuse me, the micro SD card. Don't worry about the megabytes here, that is completely false, just, just go with it, it's fine. So, I'm going to hit format. It's going to ask, are you, are you sure you want to do this? Because it's going to format this card. I'm going to like, yes, I do. It says, do not remove the card. Done. There you go. So it's 59.5 gigs. So that's exactly what you want to be as far as your card is concerned. So I'll say, okay, and exit. Now, Win32 disk imager. Now, what this does is, it's going to look for a image, right? So on my desktop, I already told it to look for the RetroPie. And how I do that is I click on there. I told it to go to desktop. And on my desktop has the one 4.1. Yeah, I'll show you so you guys can see it. 4.1 point whatever. That's so you, get, you guys can see it. So I click on that, and then it pops up. Now... You don't want it to read the image because there's no need to read it. Just write it to the to the file. Done. Now, I'm not obviously going to sit here and let you guys watch as it goes by. So I'm going to tell you just a couple of quick little things here. Once this card is done, you're going to stick it in your Raspberry Pi and it's going to set up everything. Which is perfectly fine and, of course, perfectly normal. Once it's done and everything's set up, the Win SCP will allow us to remotely through our computer talk to the Raspberry Pi so we can deliver our ROMs to it so you can't use it on the card once the card is, is the software is installed you're not gonna be able to see it the computer's gonna see basic folders but it's you're not gonna know what to do so when SCP is definitely vital to the situation here so while I wait for this thing to install I'll be back and I'll, and then we'll go to the next part okay see you guys in a minute Welcome back everybody. As you can see, the Pi has installed. It's in my Raspberry Pi right now. And I'm going to tell you what this screen is. The first thing you're going to do, because we installed the Mousebury circuit, is to install the software, obviously, right? So, in order for us to do that, we have to use what they call SSH. And the way this works is you have to connect your Raspberry Pi, either Wi-Fi or wired. I'm using wired because I prefer that better. Um, to your network and then you dial into it and to order to get into your Raspberry Pi on RetroPi your username is going to be Pi PI and of course the password is going to be Raspberry now in order to do that is you use the tiny or SSH it's called putty and you're gonna put your um, IP address in there first it's gonna ask you once you do the um, IP address you're gonna hit OK then you're going to get to this screen. And it's going to ask you, what is your login as password? You're going to hit Pi. After that, it's going to ask you, what is your password's name? You're going to put in Raspberry. Once that is complete, you're going to install the software. And this is the first part of the software setup. So that's what we're doing right now. So we're going to hit Enter here. And of course, it's connecting. I sent the request and got the files. That's perfect. That's what we want, right? It's very small. You don't need to worry about too much. The next part about it is you're going to type in sudo bash space setup dot sh. 
There you go. That's a setup. And then guess what I'm going to tell it next? Pseudo reboot. Now it's going to shut my Pi down, which is sending the signal now, and it just did. And when it comes back up, your, your script is now installed. So just to show you guys what I was talking about, that's part of it to install your Malzberry circuit. So the next part we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to install ROMs on the Pi. So stay tuned to that. Hey guys, thanks for that brief interlude you know, to go over after the installation is done. As you can see, once the installation is done, you're going to see a quick boot menu and you're going to go right into the Raspberry Pi and you're going to see this. You're going to see RetroPi. That's it. Ignore ports for now. I'll explain that in, in a minute. So, where are the damn emulators? That's a great question. I'm going to go into that for you guys so you guys understand where to, what to do first. The first thing you do is enter RetroPi. And now it's going to take you to this brief menu. Before you do anything else, go down to Raspy Config. I'm going to show you what that is right now. Now, I'm capturing this video on my Elgato capture card, so there is a slight delay. So please forgive me if you see that. Once you're on Raspy Config, you're going to enter it. And it's going to load, which is fine. It's going to bring you to this menu. Now, let me blow it up a little bit, see if I can get a little bit better on here. Okay. You can barely see it, but you can see it. You can get enough of it. All right. So, the first thing you're going to do is hit expand file system. Why, why do that? I'm going to tell you why. If you have an 8 gig, 32, 64, 16, whatever you want to use as a micro SD card, you want to expand the file system because you're going to add more ROMs. Let's face facts, we're all going to do that. In this video, I'm just going to add one, because I have a lot of ROMs I have to add for my library, but for this one, I'm gonna just going to add one. So I'm going to hit Expand File System, so I can use the entirety of the micro SD card. If you don't do that, you're going to have a small file system, and it's going to tell you, you're all filled up. And you're like, what the hell happened? Go here first, hit that. Done. Once you did that, it's going to ask you to reboot. That's fine. I already did it, so I don't have to reboot. The next thing I'm going to show you is because some people are going to ask about it. It's on number six, and it's called Overstop. It's going to called it's called Overclock. Excuse me, I apologize. I don't do that. The Raspberry Pi, I believe, is around 1.2, 1.3 gigahertz, and for the ROMs I'm going to be playing on this thing, it doesn't need a lot. So overclocking, nah, I'm good. It's just going to overheat your Raspberry Pi for no reason. And I'm not going to do that. It makes no sense. So I'm going to ignore that. But some people may try it. And if you do get a good success out of the deal, let me know in the comments below. Tell me how it worked out for you. So I'm going to go back to finish. And it's going to take us back to the Raspberry Pi menu. So let's go back. Now that we're back, I'm going to go ahead and bring us back in that menu so you guys can see the whole screen. There you go. Now that we're back here, the next thing you're going to do is go to RetroPi Setup. Sorry about the delay. Like I said, it's my delay on the capture card. So you're going to hit Enter. It's going to load that menu up. Now, in this menu, I'm going to bump as much as I can so you guys can see it again. In this menu, you're going to see a couple of things. The top half says Basic Install, and that just basically installs the ROMs that they know work perfectly fine. The next one says update all installed packages. So it's going to update every ROM that's installed on this thing and it's going to take you a while. I mean mine is already updated. I have the latest RetroPie from their website. Uh, RetroPie uh, software excuse me from their website. There's no need for me to update it. The next thing you're going to do is manage packages and why am I doing that? Manage packages you want to go ahead and install that because I think an option 32 or 36 is Cody, and you want to install that. And that's what you saw on the ports, that ports menu. And the reason why you're going to install Cody is that's your home entertainment software. That's what you need later on to install, like your TV software and stuff. I'll get into that in a minute. I'm not going to go into that. Let's go stick with the ROMs for now. I'm done here, right? So I'm done. It's going to ask me to restore or, or restore. Wow, restart. No problem. I'm going to go back to the main menu. Once this is complete, 
as you can see, is Maya Elgato here. But once this is complete, um, you can do two things. You can install Wi-Fi or do a wired connection. For this particular one, I didn't chose Wi-Fi. I could have, but I didn't. I chose to install it wired so I can get a great connection to my Raspberry Pi. And once you do that, you're going to get your IP. It's gonna, and the, how to do that, there's an option that says show IP. And the reason why you want that is so another software that I'm going to use in a little bit to help you install ROMs. And of course, a splash screen. What do I mean? That's a good, good thing you ask. A splash screen normally loads up the Raspberry Pi, loads all the information, and you're going to see emulation station. That's fine. I don't care about that. Then you're going to see this. It's going to say RetroPie. It's going to show you just this. It's okay. It's no problem. I want to customize it my way. And what I did was I looked online and looked at a lot of people's boot menus for RetroPie, and I found this splash screen. I thought it was awesome. There's not going to be any audio. I apologize, but you can find it on YouTube. I, I can tell you it's there. So it loads up like this, and as you can see, it looks similar to a Famicom system. And it's going to play a little music about with Mario, and it's pretty cool because it, it actually fits my Nintendo case. So I'm just going to get to the end a little bit because I want to give credit to the person who made this. So there you go. If you guys looked online, you can say Nintendo Splash Screen. Dre8472 did a great job with the Splash Screen. And th it, there's a lot of Splash Screens there. You can have that one. We have Chrono Trigger. You can do whatever you want. But this one fit my system, so I, I have it for this system. And you, the, in order for you to get the Splash Screen that you want, you got to highlight Splash Screens and select it. And then, it, again, it actually to restart. Every time you do something and change the software, it's going to constantly ask you to restart. Let's go back to the main menu. Now that I've done, as you can see, port shows up, which means Cody's installed. We'll get to Cody in a little bit. Let's go ahead and install a game for now. So I'm going to bring this over just a little. Bring this over here. Or maybe it does Okay. There you go. I'll bring this over here like that. And... This is the software. This is the splash screen I just showed you. The software you use to install ROMs is called Win SCP. So, as you as you as I told you earlier, you needed your um, IP address. So I'm going to give my IP address. And the username again, when you put it in, is Pi. And the password is Raspberry. Gonna connect to it and boom, you're in. Now that I'm talking to my Raspberry Pi, you're gonna see this screen first. No problem. You're gonna click on Retro Pi, and then if you're gonna do a custom splash screen, boom, it's drag and drop. Install it here. It reads MP4 formats. So there you go. Install it, and then from now on, you'll be able to select it under your Retro Pi software, and you'll have your own custom splash screen. Let's install a game. Wow, there's a lot of folders here. Now, the reason why these folders are here is from, it serves a couple of purposes. Every time you have a ROM for a game and you put it in a respective folder, it will show up in RetroPod. I'm going to show you how it does that in a minute. So the first game I'm going to install is Super Mario Bros. 2. Because I have this game. And I love this game. I'm going to put it under the NES one. So the NES one is right here. And I make sure that it's installed. Boom. It's in there. Done. All right. Now that I'm done installing ROMs, I'm going to close out. And it's going to take me back to my menu. Now, the game is still not here. Why is that? Again, like I said to you before, you have to restart it every time. But you don't have to go through the whole boot cycle. Go into the quit menu. I'm going to bring it down. Like again, guys, it's just a little slow. And I'm going to select quit but instead of saying shut down system restart system I want to only restart emulation station so I'm going to restart that I'm just going to sign myself out and put us back in and boom Nintendo's right there you see let's go ahead and make sure the game plays I mean we did all that work there's Super Mario Brothers 2 and it's going to load
That's how I program the, my remote. So start and select will bring me back to main menu and retro pie. Now some of you probably ask me why am I using the Xbox 360 controller because it does tell you on the left hand corner what controller I'm using. And the reason why is I, I ordered a special Nintendo controller with some joysticks, four button. I got it from um, I got it from Amazon.com, and it uses Bluetooth, which is what the RetroPie is built for. It has Bluetooth built into it, which is pretty cool. So I have it; it's coming, which is not here yet. And I want to make this video for you guys. So now my emulation station, pretty much, is done. Right? Cool. Now let's go ahead and go to the home theater portion of my virtual pie. So we're going to go to ports. We're going to go down to Cody. And it's going to launch Cody. Sometimes it doesn't launch Cody. I have to do it twice. Hey guys, uh, this portion of the Cody was so bad in the recording because I guess it's from the um, the um, Elgato capture card. It made it so terrible the way the sound is. It just made it like a high hissing noise. I didn't want to put that on, on the video. That's the reason why you hear me doing a voiceover. As you can see, Cody does work as opposed to the um, retro engine. You may hear me at the end of my voice over here. You're going to hear me continue on. So please forgive me on that matter. But I had to just tell you what was going on in this particular segment. You can add whatever you want on here. If you go to Google or YouTube and look up Cody builds, you'll be able to actually see uh, uh, different builds for Cody, which you can add on here and use on your uh, Raspberry Pi, make it a home theater system. So Without, without further ado, I'm going to go back into the video, but at least I wanted to show you what was going on. Thank you. So, overall, what I wanted to tell you guys is that um, this is all done for free software. The only thing you paid for was the hardware. And you don't have to use Raspberry Pi. There's a lot of little mini boards out there. Apparently, Retro Engine is, looks like they're using Orange Pi Lite because it's cheap. It's like a $12 board. But if you pay for cheap, mind you, the game that you want to play may not be really good on that board. So keep that in mind. Right? I showed everyone how to do this. All the software, I used, software that I've used so far is free. Hardware costs your money. The case I got from an old thing, so it's new. It's new. The Raspberry circuit. The reason why I paid seventeen dollars for that circuit for the Raspberry Pi is because it does a, a soft boot, boot shutdown. And the reason why you don't want to do that is because Raspberry Pi doesn't have a turn off to on and off switch. So you have to have something that will do it. Raspberry Pi does it. Raspberry circuits do it for you. So that way it shuts it down softly, and you don't have to worry about it. And that's the reason why I installed it, and I showed you how to install the software. This all was done to my specification to what I like. This may not be what all you want. You can do something different. You can even get custom cases for the Raspberry Pi on Etsy.com. Please, guys. I don't. I mean, some of you guys have told me so far. Listen, James. I don't care what you tell what you tell me. I'm lazy. I just want to go ahead and buy it because it's done. I respect your decision. For those of you guys who don't want to wait. Because they're, they're going to be backed up into June, July. I mean, you want to you wanna do a Nintendo? Mini Nintendo NES? No. Why, why would you wait? This stuff, this, this stuff that you can get, these parts, get online through eBay, through Amazon. Hell, if you have a Micro Center store, a computer store that sells Raspberry Pi, Radio Shack, they sell Raspberry Pis. Go there. You'll be able to get them now. You can do them now. You know what I mean? Sorry about that. My cell phone's going off. So... I want to be able to keep that in mind with you guys. So either way, this is the end of my, my series to build my own um, Nintendo or mini Nintendo system for my house. If you guys liked what I did, please you know, tell me in the comments below. If you didn't like it, if you would have done something different, if you have a suggestion, I'm all ears. Now the retro gaming vault, the one I, the gaming vault that I have, the gamers vault that I'm making right now, 
I don't have to do all about repairs. I do repair old consoles. So if you have an old console that you want to know about or how to repair it or how to do it safely, let me know. I'll do a video. If you want to know about gaming video news, I can talk about that. I will do gaming history. I've done those before in the past with my friends at home. So I can do it for you guys here too. Any suggestions about, the, about this channel? Let me know. Either way, I want you to hit the subscribe button. Thumbs up the video, leave a comment down below, and if those of you guys who are not getting my videos, next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell. Click on that, add notifications so when I do new, uh, do new videos, it'll pop up, you'll be able to see my videos on YouTube. Either way guys, thank you so very much. Happy New Year to those who, you know, those who have it or celebrate it. Happy New Year to you all, and I'll see you next year. Take care.